This is Mike Scott, the film critic at the Times Picayune in New Orleans. And if you go see just one movie this weekend, this is the one. You're probably expecting me this week to recommend Speed Racer, the whiz bang big screen adaptation of the classic 60s cartoon. It's this week's big film, the one put together by the Wachowski brothers, those Chicago bred filmmakers who have proven themselves to be nothing short of visionary where visual effects are concerned. These are the guys, you'll remember, who brought us 1999's stunningly innovative sci fi adventure, The Matrix. At the same time, though, they've proven that they're not above sacrificing story for style. These are also the same guys, you'll remember, who brought us 2003's disappointing The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions. And in that regard, Speed Racer is a spot-on addition to the Wachowskis' resume. Visually, it's remarkable, as they combine their passion for special effects with an obvious love for the source material. Story-wise, however, it's a vast disappointment. A cold, heartless tale punctuated by endless, jawbone-heavy flashbacks and endless racing sequences that'll make you realize that maybe the pod racer scene from Star Wars Episode One wasn't that bad after all. Loyal fans of Japanese anime in general, and Speed Racer in particular, will still probably be revved up by it all, but casual fans and newcomers will probably start looking for the checkered flag early on. So here's what you should do. While the fanboy in your life goes and checks out Speed Racer, you go see Iron Man again. And this time be sure to sit through the closing credits for that little surprise segment everyone's been talking about but that you missed the first time around. Even if the film is in its second week of release, it's a lot more fun than Speed Racer. It's a lot more sit-throughable, it's a lot more interesting, and this week, it's also the one.